Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains inflammable. So much fire. So much unquenchable, eternal fire. Fire! And today, we are going to discuss fire. Just a lot of it. Um, sometimes, people have designed locomotives that, as it turned out, had a really interesting habit of just bursting into flame. It's just one of those things. Um, that's usually not advised, but it has occurred. So, let's talk about it. These are five trains that were secretly pyromaniacs. The IE-201 class. These locomotives were actually built by General Motors in 1994 and 1995, specifically for North Ireland Railways and Irish Rail. For their time, they were actually very good, at least on paper. They were very powerful at 3,200 horsepower and very fast at 102 miles per hour. Now, I put them low on the list because sometimes they're all right. And they're actually still in service as far as my research shows, but they've had some teething problems over the years that has resulted in certain issues. Bogey cracks, for example, uh, were common on them, and that's never a good thing, but the one big problem that was really alarming had to do with their head and power. Head and power is pretty common on trains nowadays. It basically allows the engine to supply power to the rest of the train. This could be used for heating, charging batteries, etc. If you've been on a modern train, you've probably been on a coach that has an outlet for you to charge your phone. That usually has to do with the head end power. These locomotives were equipped with it, which is fine, but when the head end power was utilized, it had a tendency to overheat, especially when the locomotive was traveling at very high speeds. This actually resulted in at least one bursting into flame. As a result of this, as well as the outrageous noise that the hidden power on these actually caused at stations, they don't even use it anymore. Nowadays, they'll use generator vans instead to supply the power to the train, rather than taking it from the locomotive itself. It seems to be a weird limitation, as most modern passenger units should be able to use head-end power without this kind of a problem. But the 201s? No, I think it's best if we don't. I, I, I would prefer not to have another one burst into flame. I think that's cool. I think that's a great, great concept. Let's not do that. The British Rail Class 21. I would like to personally and publicly thank my Discord server for supplying me with both the idea and some of the suggestions for this list. Um, it was they that insisted that the 21 had to go on the list again. And to be fair, with a concept like this, yeah, I can't avoid it, but I really wanted to. And you guys were just like, no, but but it did. It, it burst into flame. You gotta talk about it again. Fine. Ugh. Built by the North British Locomotive Company in Glasgow for British Rail, between 1958 and 1960, 58 of these horrific monstrosities were created, and they are probably one of, if not the worst, diesels to come out of the modernization plan. They were terrible. Everything went wrong on these things. The diesel engine itself was actually based off of a German design, which in the original German form was very good, but when NBL constructed them, they utilized inferior quality materials, and that resulted in just so many problems. The cooling systems weren't adequate, and the engines leaked, not being constructed to the appropriate tolerances of operation. Their cylinder heads fractured, and the lubricating oil escaped into the battery compartments. Now, those flaws were mostly rectified during a rebuilding program between 1961 and 1962, but the positioning of minor components within the locomotive's body shell meant that smaller faults, of which there were a lot, could only be rectified on depot or by return to a railway workshop, which resulted in poor availability. But the big issue, and this is why they were so dangerous, and why some were actually scrapped because of it, was that they had a habit of catching fire. The engine rooms 
often burst into flames. Often. And it rode off several of the locomotives. To the point that allegedly, I have found no concrete evidence of this, but apparently, for a while, British Rail actually didn't even utilize brand new models of these diesel that they would receive. The problems were so bad that they would just throw them into storage, not even putting them on the rails, because what was the point? They were going to break anyway, and they might get somebody killed. Even British Rail didn't want to deal with that. Plenty of their other diesels were having issues about this time, but none of those issues were as lethal as fire. The 21s kind of stand out in that regard, but they were rebuilt and re-engined into Class 29s. The 29s were better, but they were non-standard after only a short time, and as a result didn't actually stick around that long, all being retired by 1971, and every single one of them was scrapped. The General Electric C39-8 there were a lot of General Electric suggestions for this list, and there's a very major reason for that. Early General Electrics especially had major issues with their turbochargers. The turbochargers had a tendency to leak fuel into the exhaust. This was due to a variety of faults, but it usually resulted in this exact thing you're looking at. Even modern day General Electric sometimes suffer from this problem, and I still don't know why General Electric keeps getting away with this nonsense, because I can't imagine any railroad wants to deal with a diesel that has a pillar of flame jutting out from the top of it. The C39-8s, in particular, were a lot worse in this regard. They already had bad riding characteristics and had a tendency to overheat, but their turbocharger issues were bad even by Dash 8 standards, and those weren't very good standards when it came to the turbochargers. Their fuel injectors were awful, and exhaust fires were frequent. Less than 200 were actually produced, and only one as of 2021, is considered operational, at least in the United States. That's former Norfolk Southern 8212, who's at the Pennsylvania Northeastern Railroad's main yard in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Sitting in storage, not actually in operation, but capable of it. They probably don't want to do that because they enjoy not being caught on fire. The New South Wales 41 class locomotive. Oh boy. The 41 class were built by British Thompson Houston in the United Kingdom, specifically for the New South Wales Department of Railways in 1953 and 1954. NSW actually ordered 10 diesel locomotives from Australian General Electric, but they sublet the contract to British Thompson Euston, and the body was actually built by Metro Camel of Birmingham. But if there was one diesel on the rails that could ever be called a pyromaniac, it'd probably be this one, right up there with the Class 21s and anything General Electric that's early and has a turbocharger. These things always overheated, and always always caught on fire. Several modifications were rolled out to try to fix them, but eventually it was kind of seen as too expensive to do that to all of them. Additionally, they were actually equipped to operate in multiple setups, but they didn't do this because the cooling system saw that the radiator heat from the first locomotive would actually pass to the second one, causing the whole overheating thing to be marginally worse. They lasted barely 10 years before their Paxman engines were actually coming to an end of their useful life. By then, new Class 48s were on the horizon, which were much, much better. Impressively, one did wind up preserved, and is currently stored at the Broadmeadow Locomotive Depot, where you can still see it to this day. Gasoline-powered doodlebugs. I love doodlebugs, not those doodlebugs. I got a lot of British people pointing out that they called V1 flying bombs doodlebugs during World War II, and that's an alarming regional difference, because over here, we call these adorable railcars doodlebugs. And over there, you call bringers of death and destruction doodlebugs. What a difference in cultures we have. Anyway, my doodlebugs are adorable, and I love them. But early ones were powered by gasoline. And there are many, 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 many reasons why locomotives, generally speaking, aren't powered by gasoline. Gasoline has a much lower flash point than diesels does. And we still use gasoline in cars, but cars, if they do get in an accident, are a lot lighter. And therefore, the damage that can be done by them isn't necessarily as high as something as large as a locomotive. But the early doodlebugs really were at a big risk when it came to fire because of the gasoline, not because of anything else. Although there was one case, the Doodlebug disaster. The crash was so destructive partially because of the intense fire that erupted after the accident due to the gasoline. 
But the reason the accident happened was due to carbon monoxide poisoning, resulting in the driver of the doodlebug not actually realizing that he had already passed the siding that he was supposed to go off of to avoid plowing into a freight train. It was a very tragic event, but it wouldn't have been nearly as bad had the doodlebug been diesel powered. Oh, and if they had done anything about the fumes leaking into a cab, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, by the mid-20th century, most doodlebugs were repowered to utilize diesel, not gasoline, because of the inherent risk of fire. And it wasn't like they necessarily burst into flame in any waking moment. They weren't necessarily poorly built. It was just kind of an oversight due to the risks involved with rail travel and gasoline usage. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thorst III, Some Dude 267, Orange Glass, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 191 232, Mr. Black Rose, Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, Lock Crack, and Twin Fox, Dime Blade 17, Anzac A1, and Dozzy Wazit. Till next time, this is Darkness, individual, a fond farewell.